Dear Willoughby, I reckon probably about a hundred times in this show, and just like the Messiah, here she is. India, how are you doing? How are you doing, Ian? Hope you're okay. Good as gold at this end. I mean, there's been a lot said this afternoon. Uh, we've had everything from the changing room dilemma, as you might be aware of, um, to arguments of people being misgendered um, on the uh, on the program as well. What, what's your takeaway from everything that is happening right now in this curious place that we were, as you and I have discussed many times before, we were never in this place five years ago. Indeed, we were not. But that was the birth of the gender critical mo movement five years ago. So I'm actually just out in the car driving around and, and I was listening to your show, as I often do in the afternoon, Ian. I know we have different views on many things, but it's still an entertaining listen. Thank so you. So I'm tuned in and I'm hearing so much rubbish, myth and misinformation um, from some of your callers. I understand why that is, and it's because trans people don't have any representation in the British media, and we very rarely get to put our side of the story out here. So here's some truth bombs. First of all, the, the, the chap that was just on there, who was saying that there, there seems to be more... I think, was he saying that there was There were more, 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 men, because, more, more men trans to female right. than the other right. way around. Okay. Well, well, we've just had the national census for the first time course, ever, yeah. which, which took the census figures. So, uh, here's the truth bombs. So, it's 0.5% of the British population identify as trans. Of that, the split is 48,000 of them are trans men. And guess what? 48,000 are trans women. Is that right? So, it's a literally 50-50? It's, it's a literal... 50-50 split, you can go on, you can look, those are the facts. When you what said 48, I thought you were going to say 52 was the other, like the, kind of like the no, Brexit No, no, thing. not like a Brexit, that yeah. would be sexist, that, that would be sexist, that not would Brexit. Be. <laughs> um, so, so that's the first thing, and trans people have always said it's a 50-50 split, we've always said it's 0.5%, it was always rubbish, we have the census. And it comes out again. Trans I don't. I don't think anybody was suggesting that if it wasn't a fifty-fifty split, that there was anything wrong with that. I think anecdotally, perhaps we hear more female trans voices than we hear male trans voices. Well, well, well this comes. This comes on to my next point that I'm about to make here. This conversation is dominated by trans women, and the fact that trans women are somehow perverts dangerous, a threat to society, they're going to be grooming kids, yeah. which is complete claptrap. And I, I hope you've it. noted, uh, India, because you, you're right, we've had some disagreements. I don't think we've actually had many disagreements on this <clears throat> point, um, and, and even the wider issue, the trans issue, but they, I, I have done my best to try and advocate that, that these are urban myths, mischievous urban myths, and, you know, sh should not be taken really but seriously. It, that, 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 that may well be the case, and if you're doing that, Ian, well, thank you very much. That's greatly appreciated. But the, but the issue is, that is the political narrative that trans people are a threat, that women are going to be put at risk because they, they, we cannot accommodate trans women in women's facilities, which is, it's just nonsense. There is no example whatsoever. So uh, an, another little truth bomb here. Everyone's talking about trans women because we dominate the conversation. What about trans men who never get a mention? Now, if the gender critical movement get their way and we go down some sort of handmaiden's tale uh, society where everything is very rigid and, and the, the, the lines are, are, are divided, they're very firm, then well, can you tell me where trans men who are biologically female yep. under their rules are going to go? I, I, made, I, I literally what? made this very point, India. I was talking about Cher's son and uh, the, the, an article I was reading recently and I don't think anybody would look at Cher's son yep. and not see a man. And yep. there was it led me to another story which had a, a load of guys in the gym who are all trans men. And I, I made that very point. It would be and, extraordinary and if they you, were going to turn up in a female change. Exactly. And let me tell you, we're not talking about effeminate men here. We are talking about big guys who go out, who pump yep. iron, who grow beards, who are bald, they're smelly. They, they look quite scary in some instances. I get that. So what about, what about that other group then that I've kind of alluded to, that where if... 
you know, if, if somebody said, may well in their own mind and in fact in their own hearts have known that they're trans from a very young age but have never lived life like that. And with these kind of conversations, India, they say, OK, well, I'm now going to declare and come out as a trans woman, even though obviously nothing's changed physically. Therefore, I should be able to use a female change. Not a sex offender, nothing like that. However, you can see where there's a problem there, India. No, I can't, Ian. Why, why is there a problem there? If somebody um, identifies as the other uh, sex, what makes them instantly a threat to, to women? No, they might not be a threat, but if it should, you know, Terry with the stubble and the broad shoulders and the willy but, but be wait, able no, to walk into the changing rooms of a female that's, changing that's, room? That's, that's not what we're proposing, is it? No, 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 no I'm talking it. about that. I, look, and I know it's rare. I'm merely asking no, because no, no, it's no. come up. No, no, no. This is this is a point which often comes up in the trans conversation where we talk about trans men, we talk about trans women, and then in the middle of the conversation, it's like a road junction, it's like rail tracks. We cross into this mythical person. It's like the sporting conversation where where it, it deviates from talking about trans sports women yep. and saying that you wouldn't have Mike Tyson in a boxing ring with a woman or uh, Bolt running against women. Well, well, no, but we, we're not talking about trans women anymore. We're talking about Bolt. So that scenario you're talking about there, about a big bloke with stubble, Terry. Well, yes, and I was trying, try what I was trying to do is obviously paint the picture of somebody who is obviously physically a bloke. And, but I'm, I'm not reducing or diluting their right and every sense of being a woman that they have. The women in the changing room or the blokes in the chain, whichever way round it is, what is the deal there? It's a genuine question. It's not an offence well, well, thing. Well, 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 what is well, the deal well, in that, that scenario when somebody is yeah. yet to fully transition? Well, yeah, well, if, if you're in that situation, if you're a genuine trans person and you don't look yet like the opposite sex to any degree, then I'm afraid that's just how trans people is. Trans people isn't like a magic Flip, okay. no, that's flip. a very honest answer. In fact, probably the most honest one we've had. I, I, when you, the last time I saw you, Andy, when you came into the studio, I said to you, and I said it on the radio, it would be the weirdest thing in the world if you used the men's lose. I couldn't use them. I couldn't. I just. I literally couldn't use them. It would be. It would be too dangerous. Of course. It would be ridiculous. Absolutely. But what I'm trying to get across is that it's really hard being transient, being born that way. It's not a nice thing. Nobody would actually choose it. There is a crossover, a long crossover spell, the ugly duckling spell, if you like, where you go from one to the other. And a lot of these things are actually being judged on how people facially look. Forget about the genitals and what have you. Yep. It's people like the lady that you were talking, uh, who was talking earlier on about the, the changing ring situation that she'd experienced. And I understand that. It's a very human instinct. You see someone who facially looks a particular sex and you get freaked out but that's not that person's fault are, are we wanting to live in a world where people are, are judged by yeah. how they no i look? listen i i i, I totally finally get it. just just finally Go i don't want to hold your show or anything the, the actual facial feminization is the you know you don't get that on the nhs so the only way that trans people can actually do that if they need it is to pay it themselves and it costs something like thirty thousand pounds yep. trans unemployment is massive so that's I, as many truth bombs as I can. Listen, no, no, you, you truth bombed the, the hell out of the last section of the show. There's nothing wrong with that. India, it's always good to chat. Thank you. I'm really happy to get that take because I cite India quite a lot. She hasn't come on the station recently very much. Um, and there is a counter to many of the comments we've heard this afternoon. India Willoughby with us here on Talk TV. Vanessa Feltz is here in a few moments' time. Just want to say, I've worked with him. Willoughby, she's fabulous. What a great journalist. Yeah, indeed. And Rod, a great person to work with and also very, very good fun and very lively, very spirited oh, person. So my compliments to India, certainly. Good work. Thank you.